Bonjour. Hi, guys. Welcome to Chapter 1, Chapitre 1. Bonjour. So uh, I'm going to walk you through uh, the things that you're going to be doing in Chapter 1 of Français Interactif. So I have the PDF open here, and uh, we're going to have a look at, at it and kind of walk you through some of the activities uh, that you can not so much worry about right now and the ones that you probably want to do on your own and give you some tips uh, for dealing with the chapter. So uh, first of all, in uh, Chapter 1, uh, what you're going to be doing is, as far as vocabulary goes, is les salutations. So more information about greetings, right? You've already done uh, a couple of greetings, or you've heard and actually said on your own uh, uh, some greetings, but there are more uh, greetings out there in French, and uh, they're included in this chapter. Les présentations. So this is a, not really a true cognate, right? Uh, uh, it's introductions, so more information about introductions. Uh, la salle de classe, so uh, vocabulary of the classroom, so all the things that exist uh, in the people that exist in a classroom, you know, a book, a professor, a student, a desk, etc. So, um, uh, useful vocabulary for being in class, en classe. And les nombres cardinaux, so this is cardinal numbers, just the numbers that we use for counting uh, uh, on an everyday basis. And we're going to go from 0 to 69 in this chapter, okay? Uh, la date, so how to ask and give uh, the date in French, and all that goes along with that, right? So the days of the week, the months of the year, etc. La phonétique, the phonetics of chapter one, uh, uh, is really just the accents, and I've kind of already covered the accents for you uh, in the last video, and uh, you already know that there are five accents in French, so uh, more information about accent marks, which are a part of spelling, so you have to include them, so hopefully you've already figured out how to make them uh, uh, in Microsoft Word and online when you're doing your text exercises, for example. Speaking of text exercises, um, uh, that's in la grammaire, the grammar of chapter one. So the grammar of chapter one, you have seven grammar points, uh, which also have text exercises that go with them, or most of them. 1.1 uh, is about subject pronouns. So subject pronouns are used uh, with in conjunction with verbs. Often they're the subject of a sentence, right? So uh, when you talk about yourself, uh, uh, I, first person singular, je, uh, second person singular, uh, familiar, tu, um, and then third person singular, when you're pointing out uh, uh, someone or talking about someone in the third person, he, il, uh, she, elle, and then on also. Uh, and il and elle can also be used uh, for it, right? So uh, uh, there's no neuter uh, uh, pronoun. And then uh, introduction to nouns, so information about nouns. Nouns have gender, so when you study nouns, uh, like livre, don't just learn livre, learn le livre, or un livre. That's an article that goes with the noun, and it gives you a tip about the gender of the noun. Is it masculine or is it feminine? So learn the gender of a noun when you learn it. Uh, a verb in this chapter, your first verb, être. The first verb is être, it means to be. It's an irregular verb. With irregular verbs in French, you just kind of have to memorize those, right? So there's really no set recipe for cooking uh, uh, the verb être, right? So you just have to memorize all the different forms of être. And uh, also, uh, you'll have um, more information about articles uh, uh, and there's two different kinds of articles in this chapter. There's the definite article and the indefinite article, right? So words for the, uh, words for a or an, and, word, and the plural of those, some. So uh, grammatical gender, uh, a note about grammatical gender in French, where nouns are masculine or feminine uh, in French. And uh, uh, another grammar point, giving you the difference between voilà and il y a. When you point out things, you use voilà and il y a a lot. Okay? So uh, that's uh, the vocabulary and the grammar of the chapter. And if we're going to get back to the vocabulary in just a minute. But I just kind of want to scroll through and go down to some of the exercises in the chapter. So I'm on page 22 of the book here uh, in the first exercises of chapter 1. You notice uh, uh, that in the margin of the book, you have all these great cultural notes. Now, right now they're in English, but you'll see that they're going to switch to French uh, uh, later on uh, in the book. But I strongly recommend that you read these very attentively. So you can see on the left here 
that the first cultural note in chapter one is about the distinction between tu and vous, right? So uh, in Romance languages in general, and in most languages of the world, uh, there is a formal way of speaking and an informal way of speaking. Certain words and phrases that you use uh, with people um, uh, between whom you want to maintain a certain distance or for whom you need to show a certain amount of respect. And uh, um, familiar words, familiar phrases, a familiar way of speaking for people who are somehow your equal, like your family members, uh, uh, friends, classmates, people who are somehow in the same boat uh, uh, as you, right? So uh, uh, that's a nice little note about tu and vous. There's two great exercises that go with greetings, uh, uh, formal greetings and informal greetings right here. Les salutations polies in exercise one and les salutations familières uh, in exercise two, right? So in exercise one, you need to fill this conversation out, finish it up by using uh, uh, formal uh, words and phrases, right? And those are found in the vocabulary. In exercise two, it's kind of the same conversation, really, pretty much. Uh, and uh, this one's given in an informal way. So you have to use informal words and phrases to customize uh, exercise two, all right? So pay attention to the differences, right? So uh, just look really quickly at the first line of exercise one, you see bonjour and then a title, all right? As opposed to the first line of exercise two where it, the greeting is just salut and there's no title. So right away, you know that uh, when you speak in a formal way, you usually have a greeting and a title as opposed to an informal way, it's just salut, hey, right? Uh, uh, and and then uh, the conversation moves on uh, uh, from there. So have a look at those two and try those two exercises. In exercise three, uh, how would you respond to these things? So is this a formal greeting or an informal greeting? And how would you respond to it, right? Could be a question like in number three or number five. How would you answer those questions, right? Uh, so uh, keep in mind that, uh, that if there's a title in there, that that's formal. So you probably need to continue that somehow in a formal way. And then exercise four um, is really with a classmate. You're more than welcome to write a dialogue out, but we're not going to really do the, that in a, in a formal exercise uh, uh, in our online class. So not really that big a deal. You don't have to deal with it. Exercise five is uh, uh, going into spelling, spelling out uh, names. And we talked about spelling a little bit in uh, uh, the, the preliminary chapter. And uh, you basically are saying the letters when you're spelling things out, remembering to add the accent mark after the letter that you state. In this conversation, uh, these two students' last names don't have accents in them, so uh, you don't really have to worry about that. But there's one or two words in there that have accent marks accent marks in them. So if you have to spell, for example, the word écrit, see that word écrit, the S apostrophe, s'écrit right there? If you had to spell écrit, that would be E accent aigu, C-R-I-T, right? So don't forget accent marks when you spell. In exercise six, uh, that continues, but you're actually giving translations uh, of these subjects, right? So you have to look back in your list of subjects and uh, uh, decide how would you say these things uh, in French, right? Now remember that just before the blank there, you've got a little clue, right? So those clues, L apostrophe or le or le or la, give you a clue about what you need to put in the blank, right? So in the first one, in uh, uh, L apostrophe, L apostrophe, you know right away that, or you should know right away, that uh, the first word there in that blank uh, uh, is going to start with a vowel because L apostrophe uh, is used for nouns that start with vowels, right? And it's also singular, by the way. Le means that the noun is singular and masculine. L apostrophe means that we know that that one starts with a vowel or a silent H. Le means that the next word has got to be singular or plural. Plural, right? So, uh, etc. So, L apostrophe, next one, computer science, that one starts with a vowel. La, the next word is going to be feminine singular, right? So, check that exercise out. And if we have time to talk about it during our online meeting, in our second online meeting, we will. Um, and then, uh, there's some dictation listening exercises uh, here. I usually save those for our online meetings. So, that's another important reason to come to the online meetings, right? Check the dates and desire to learn. Uh, and make sure you attend. So we'll work our way through as many of these as we can because they're quite useful. Uh, a nice thing about the book is that it uh, boils down the grammar points uh, and kind of reminds you in the margin of what's going on. So 1.1 was about subject pronouns, and there they all are. 1.2 was about the forms of the verb to be in the present tense, there they all are, right there. So uh, usually 
when you see them in the margin, that means that there's some exercises that go along with them right there in the chapter. So you kind of need to go online and read the grammar explanation and do the exercise before you even try any of the exercises in this area of the chapter. Okay, So make sure you do the exercises that are associated with these exercises before uh, um, uh, even trying. Yeah, So uh, have a look at the online exercises at the textbook website that go with these 1.1 and 1.2. That way you'll know the subject pronouns and you'll know the forms of the verb to be and you're ready to jump in and get these activities going. Um, then uh, these kind of go on a little bit. In exercise 11 uh, right here, there's some questions right here. And these are really great questions to know. You should be able to ask and answer these questions. So the first one is kies, kies, kies. All that is just kies, right? So uh, you're asking who is it, right? So and how would you answer that question? Anybody know? To answer the question, there's actually two ways to answer the question. If you're pointing out one person to answer the question, you use C. C. That's C apostrophe E S T. C apostrophe E S T. If you're pointing out two people, uh, uh, you wouldn't use C because that's singular. You would use the plural version of that, and that's ce sont. Ce sont. Ce sont. Next question there, il est du, elle est du. You kind of can guess what that is because I already asked you in the preliminary chapter, vous êtes du, where are you from, right? So uh, we're talking about these people. So this is in the third person. So where is he from? Where is she from, right? So, and that's how you would start the answers off, il est du, elle est du, right? The plural of that, ils sont du, elles sont du. Next one, qu'est-ce qu'il fait or qu'est-ce qu'elle fait? Qu'est-ce qu'il fait? Take that uh, really slowly and repeat it with me. Qu'est-ce qu'il fait? Qu'est-ce qu'elle fait? The plural, qu'est-ce qu'ils font? Qu'est-ce qu'elles font? Now, I know some of you are probably grammar nerds like I am, and you're looking at the verb, and you're thinking, oh my God, I don't know that verb yet. Fait, font, what is that? You don't have to know that verb uh, right now, and you certainly don't need it in your answer. Actually, in your answer, you can use a three-word answer to answer that question right there. And you can just say, he is whatever, she is whatever, they are whatever, right? So just use il est, elle est, ils sont, and then whatever their occupation is. So if he's a singer, what's that going to be? Il est chanteur. You don't use the article when you give professions, right? I pointed that out to some of you in some of your recordings already. Uh, um, when you wanted to say that you're a student, you just say, je suis étudiant or je suis étudiante. No article right there. Usually, yeah, French requires you to use articles in places where in English we wouldn't really use them very much. But in this case, nope, no article. Il est acteur, whatever. So uh, anyway, there you go. Those are your uh, uh, introductions for people. Then this is some more listening exercises. We'll do those uh, in the real-time meetings. This is an exercise that is very, very useful, and that's definite articles. But remember, this is a grammar exercise, so in order to be able to do the grammar exercise, you have to know the grammar, you have to understand the grammar, and that's found in the text exercises, the grammar explanations that go with the chapter. Check out the margin over there. So uh, you have some little grammar reminders there about what was going on in your text exercises. So first of all, the definite articles, the words for the, the indefinite articles down there, the words for a, an, and some, right? So be reminded uh, that those are the things that you're going to be using in the blank. In exercise 14 right there, you're talking about le, or la, or li, or maybe even l apostrophe, right? So uh, uh, those are the ones that go in the blank. So how do you decide? Well, you need to know the gender of the noun. You need to know if it's masculine, or feminine, or singular, or plural. And you also probably want to check to make sure, does it start with a vowel or a silent H, especially if it's singular, because that will change le or la to l apostrophe, right? Be alert. And then exercise 15 uh, uh, is uh, uh, about another kind of article, and that's about uh, uh, indefinite articles. Indefinite articles, we're not talking about le, la, and le, we're talking about a, an, and some here. Un, which is a or an masculine, un, which is a or an feminine, and de, the plural of those two, which is some, right? So uh, un, un, or de, with these exercises right here. That kind of goes on. Uh, uh, some more, more activities about masculine, feminine, singular, plural, and exercise 18. Look at that one. Exercise 18 is very similar to exercise 
14, right? So exercise 14, you were dealing with le or la or le, right? Masculine, feminine, single, plural, words for thee. But exercise 18 down here, you're dealing with un or une or de. So uh, those are the words for a or an or some uh, in this exercise, right? So uh, make sure you do the text exercises first before you even try those, all right? Exercise 19 uh, uh, is a little bit of information uh, about the difference between voici, voila, and il y a, and those are explained uh, uh, in the text exercise that goes with it, so make sure you have a look at that. And then uh, there's a dictation exercise. These listening exercises like this are ones that we typically try to save for our online meetings, so uh, um, that's when we'll do that. Exercise 21 is a great translation exercise. So uh, what I'd like to do is I'm probably going to end up posting this one in a discussion. So uh, you might want to put that in your pipe for now and hang on to it because we're going to be dealing with these phrases later on. Right? Um, a lot of language teachers don't like doing translations, but I, I think they're pretty useful sometimes, So uh, especially in this case. So we're going to have a look at those later on. All right? Uh, just remember that uh, uh, French isn't a word-for-word -word translation of English, right? So um, sometimes uh, uh, words don't always translate word-for-word, -word, so uh, um, be careful. Then exercise 22 is basically just looking at that picture of the classroom right there and coming up with six objects or people that you see in the picture, right? So do you see a student? Do you see a book? Do you see some students? Do you see a pencil? Uh, whatever. Those are the things that you would list uh, in 1 through 6 right there. Exercises 23 and 24 move on to numbers, right? So uh, this is uh, uh, an exercise where you're writing out uh, the spelled version of these numbers. So exercise 23, you're just writing those numbers out. But exercise 24, you didn't know you were signing up for a math class, right? Well, you are. So uh, in this one, you have to do some uh, uh, math problems, OK? There's not a lot of room in those blanks right there. So you may want to write that on a separate sheet of paper, uh, I would. And typically, um, uh, with phrases like this, where you have to write out a complete sentence, treat it as such, meaning that Complete sentences start with a capital letter and end with a period, right? So write the whole sentence out uh, in a nice, formal, clean way, okay? So uh, uh, I'm just going to do one for you right now. So uh, if I had to start this first one right here, I'm looking at two numbers right there. It's a math problem, and you're adding, right? So the symbol for adding uh, and the word for plus in French is plus, right? So you're going to say dix plus neuf. And then the word for equals, you can either say égal or you can say font, right? So, 10 plus 9 font, and that one's kind of easy because the answer is actually a combined word of those two numbers, 10. So, 10 plus 9 font, 10. All right? So, uh, uh, try to spell those out. Exercise 25 is another one of those listening ones that we'll get to uh, uh, in our um, real-time meetings. Exercise 26 some more translation phrases. Exercise 27 is giving the date right there. Careful with the date uh, uh, in French because when you give the date, there's uh, a certain order for giving these things. If you've looked at the course calendar, you've noticed that already, uh, that I use the date in French uh, in the course calendar. Um, some writing differences uh, in French are that you don't capitalize days of the week and you don't capitalize months of the year in French. All right? We capitalize those things in English, but in French you really don't, so uh, uh, careful with that. Speaking of the date, there's some date questions in exercise 28, uh, and you should be able to answer these with a complete sentence, right? So anytime you get a question like this, think about a complete sentence. How would you phrase that with a complete sentence? So uh, number one, on est quel jour aujourd'hui? Well, I'm recording this on a Saturday. So if you had to say, it's Saturday today, you would say, on est samedi aujourd'hui. On est samedi aujourd'hui. Number two is a little bit different. It's not just the day of the week. It's the whole date, right? So you have to give the whole date in number two, right? So what words do you use? Well, when you give the date, you usually use le, right? So careful with that. So on est le samedi, and then you have to give a number, right? Le samedi, what's the date today? Today is the 17th, right? On est le samedi 17 janvier. On est le samedi 17 janvier. There you go. So uh, uh, that's how you answer those, all right? Le, then a number, 
uh, in the month, or le, and then a day of the week, and a number in the month. Uh, exercise 29. How do you give your birthday? That's an important thing uh, to be able to ask and answer about. C'est quand ton anniversaire? Quand est ton anniversaire? When's your birthday? So uh, that's how you give your birthday right there. So uh, don't worry about saying my birthday is on the, all right? Just use C for all these things. So c'est quand ton anniversaire in the example. C'est le demi, for example, okay? Uh, and then exercise 30 is uh, kind of a cultural reading exercise uh, about uh, 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 trains in France. And uh, this particular uh, train ticket uh, is going from Paris to Lyon, right? So uh, uh, this is a, a TGV ticket, train uh, à grande vitesse. It's the high-speed train uh, in France. So try that exercise out. And uh, if we have time during the online meetings, we're going to do that one too, okay? So I'm going to go back to the vocabulary at the beginning of the chapter up here. And we're going to walk through some of these things. So in the salutation section, in the greetings right there. So these are all your greetings. And they're not really divided up by formal or informal, right? That's what the exercise is and, uh, and me. Oh, that's what uh, I'm for. So uh, anyway, uh, here's some right here. Titles, those are formal, right? Monsieur, Madame, Mademoiselle, right? Uh, and then some greetings, sometimes mixed with titles, sometimes not. Bonjour, Monsieur. Bonsoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Salut. That's informal. À tout à l'heure, à ce soir, à demain, à bientôt. Couple of questions here. If you see any questions in the vocabulary, you should know how to ask these questions and answer these questions as well. Comment vous appelez-vous? Comment tu t'appelles? Comment t'appelles-tu? All those questions are kind of asking the same thing, but one's formal, one's informal, right? Comment vous appelez-vous? Anytime you see vous or words that end in EZ right there, Ding, 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 formal, right? Anytime you see tu or t apostrophe or verbs that end in e or es, like in this case, um, uh, uh, that's informal. So, comment vous appelez-vous? Comment tu t'appelles? Comment t'appelles-tu? The answer, of course, you already know from the preliminary chapter. Je m'appelle, and you give your name. Questions here, again, comment allez-vous? Comment vas-tu? Uh, and that first question is formal, right? There's a vous, there's some easy. Comment vas-tu is the informal version of that same question, all right? Uh, careful with liaison. Comment allez-vous? Comment allez-vous? I'm pronouncing a T that otherwise isn't pronounced right there because I'm linking the final consonant in the T of comment allez-vous right there. Um, uh, and notice it doesn't get pronounced here. Comment vas-tu? Comment vas-tu? Comment allez-vous? Comment vas-tu? Uh, answering that in lots of different ways. Je vais très bien, merci. Not très, okay? Careful with your pronunciation. Don't say très. Très bien, très bien. Je vais très bien, merci. Je vais bien, merci. Pas mal, merci. Bien, merci. Another way to ask, uh, how are things going? How are you doing? Comment ça va? Ça va bien, ça va, etc. And then, after those questions right there, if you want to continue a, question, a conversation, you can say, et vous, or et toi. It's a way to turn around uh, 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 the question back to them, right? So, et vous, vous êtes d'où? And what about you? Where are you from? Et toi, tu es d'où? All right? How do you answer those two questions? Vous êtes d'où and tu es d'où? Je suis de, right? So, if you're from Houston, je suis de Houston. All right, uh, introducing people. So, monsieur, je vous présente. So, if you're introducing somebody to someone else in a formal way, je vous présente. And informal of that, je te présente, je te présente. And then uh, pointing somebody out or something out, voici. Asking who is uh, uh, that person, qui est, qui est. And when you answer that question in the singular, si, the plural, ce sont, si or ce sont. Um, uh, you don't know that person's name. You need to ask, what's, what's his name? What's her name? Comment s'appelle-t-il? Comment s'appelle-t-il? If it's a girl, comment s'appelle-t-elle? Comment s'appelle-t-elle? Careful with pronunciation difference. Comment s'appelle-t-il? Comment s'appelle-t-elle? I already mentioned uh, in the previous video that French likes to be consonant vowel, consonant vowel, consonant vowel. And if something would happen to where if vowels would come together, French doesn't like it when vowels come together, it finds itself crazy little ways to force itself back into that consonant vowel, consonant vowel pattern. So if you look at that question, comment s'appelle-t-il, comment s'appelle-t-elle, see that hyphen, t hyphen right there? 
The only reason why that's there is to keep the vowels apart. So this phrase will be consonant vowel, consonant vowel, consonant vowel. All right. So it doesn't mean anything. It's just to keep the vowels apart right there. So it's something you use in what's called an inverted question right there. Um, it's something you use to keep the vowels apart in third person singular inversion. Right. So comment s'appelle-t-il? Comment s'appelle-t-elle? The T doesn't mean anything. It just keeps the vowels apart. You can't go to the airport ticket counter and say T and expect them to know what you're talking about. It doesn't mean anything. It's just to keep the vowels apart. To answer that, il s'appelle, elle s'appelle. Uh, uh, if you're talking about where he is from or where she is from, il est de, elle est de. Careful with your pronunciation of that verb, right? E, il est de, all right? It's not est, that's Latin, okay? So, uh, uh, il est de, elle est de. Asking about more than one person. Comment s'appelle-t-il? What are their names? Comment, comment s'appelle-t-elle? Uh, if they're all girls. Il s'appelle, elle s'appelle. Alright? If you have a group of people and you're talking about them and at least one of them is a guy, you need to use the masculine. Il s'appelle, uh, uh, il sont deux, uh, uh, etc. Right? So, uh, sorry ladies, one bad apple spoils the bunch. Alright? A few more questions here. Qu'est-ce qu'il fait? Qu'est-ce qu'elle fait? Qu'est-ce qu'ils font? Qu'est-ce qu'elles font? Right there. Uh, um, singular and plural versions of those. You don't have to worry about that verb, fait and font, not a big deal right now. Just answer it with il est, elle est, ils sont, elles sont. Here's your professions. So when you state somebody's profession, whether they're a student, a professor, an actor, it doesn't matter, um, don't use the article uh, with it. So if he's an actor, il est acteur. If you're a student, je suis étudiant. Il est professeur. It doesn't matter. Il est acteur, elle est actrice. So that's the masculine version and the feminine version of some of these nouns, right? Il est architecte, elle est architecte. Il est chanteur, elle est chanteuse. Il est coiffeur, elle est coiffeuse. Il est dentiste, uh, elle est dentiste. Il est ingénieur, elle est ingénieur. Il est journaliste, médecin, professeur, retraité, stagiaire. Back to retraité real quick. So uh, with that one, uh, retraité, See how the feminine version has an extra E, an unaccented E on the end of it? You'll see that a lot. To make something feminine, you add another E, right? And they sound the same. Retraité, retraité. When you write them, uh, uh, there's a difference, okay? You don't pronounce the extra E at all. It, the syllable, last syllable you hear is T. Retraité, that's it. Stagiaire is the word for intern uh, in French. Uh, vocabulary from the classroom, la salle de classe. So if you're asking what something is, that's qu'est-ce que c'est? Qu'est-ce que c'est? Qu'est-ce que c'est? That's what that question is. Qu'est-ce que c'est? And when you point out something, uh, uh, you use uh, the phrase c'est, c'est. Qu'est-ce que c'est? C'est. Uh, and then you point something out. So if you had to ask what this thing is, it's an ink pen, right? So qu'est-ce que c'est? And you had to say it's an ink pen. C'est un stylo. C'est un, and I pronounce that a little bit differently, right? C'est un stylo. C'est une télévision. I'm doing liaison, right? So I'm pronouncing the uh, normally unpronounced T at the end of the phrase, C, and linking it into the beginning vowel sound of un or une, right? So c'est un, c'est une. C'est un professeur. C'est une chaise. Okay? So, uh, these are all the things and people uh, uh, in a classroom. Dans la salle de classe, il y a, these are the things that there are there, une porte, une fenêtre, un tableau, une télévision, une carte, une affiche, une chaise, un bureau. Uh, and these are things that you might find on your desk, right? Sur le bureau, il y a une craie, un crayon, un stylo, un cahier, un livre, un dictionnaire, un sac à dos and things you might find in a computer lab or uh, something you use to take this class. Au labo, il y a des ordinateurs. Des ordinateurs. Liaison, right there. Des ordinateurs, right? Don't pronounce final consonants, right? So uh, that S doesn't get pronounced. Des ordinateurs. Les étudiants travaillent. Les étudiants travaillent. Resist all temptation to do something with that ENT. Don't touch. Don't pronounce it. Les étudiants travaillent. Des devoirs, un exercice, un examen. And uh, that goes on. So uh, these are some kind of typical commands you might hear, uh, like in a face-to-face -face classroom, the professor would bark orders at you, right? So uh, these are things that the professor would say to you en classe. Écoutez, écrivez, 
Levez le doigt if you have a question. Raise your hand. Levez la main or levez le doigt. Répétez. Ouvrez vos livres. Ouvrez le livre à la page, to a certain page, like à la page 20. Uh, uh, S'il vous plaît, vous comprenez? Oui, je comprends. Non, je ne comprends pas. Yeah, it's written, non, je ne comprends pas, by the way. But nobody ever says, non, je ne comprends pas. Nobody ever goes to the trouble of saying all of those syllables so clearly. Instead, you're probably going to hear, je ne comprends pas, je ne comprends pas. You're kind of eating the E in ne, right? Je ne comprends pas. Or even, je comprends pas. No, je comprends pas, je comprends pas. All right? Uh, it's much more common to uh, hear and say, je comprends pas, then je ne comprends pas. Que veut dire? You use that if you don't know what something means. Uh, um, comment dit-on? Or how do you say? Uh, uh, pointing things and people out. Voici, voilà. Voici, if it's, if it's close to you, here it is. Voilà, uh, if it's further away. Il y a, you're just stating the existence of something. Il y a des chaises. Il y a un professeur. There is some chairs. I don't know. Uh, uh, il y a combien de? That's what you use to ask how many. Combien de is how many. Careful with that de in combien de, because if you ask, if you had to ask how many books, yeah, you would just say, il y a combien de livres, right? But if you had to ask, how many students or how many computers, um, students, étudiants, computers, ordinateur, those two nouns start with vowels. So instead of de right there, what would you have? D apostrophe. It would contract, right? So you'd have to say, il y a combien d'étudiants? Il y a combien d'ordinateurs, right? So that de becomes d apostrophe if the next word is a vowel, starts with a vowel or a silent H. Meaning the date, la date. Le calendrier, le jour. Here's a good question. Quels sont les jours de la semaine? What are the days of the week? Les jours de la semaine sont, these are they, lundi, mardi, mercredi, jeudi, vendredi, samedi et dimanche. Les jours de la semaine. So, il y a sept jours dans une semaine, n'est-ce pas? So, uh, those are the seven days of the week right there, okay? So, make sure you don't capitalize them when you write them out. You don't know the day? C'est quel jour? C'est lundi. Oh, that's what day it is. Uh, and a few more phrases. Aujourd'hui, aujourd'hui, aujourd'hui. Careful with your pronunciation there. Demain, it's tomorrow. La semaine, la semaine. Next week is la semaine prochaine, la semaine prochaine. Uh, last week would be la semaine dernière, la semaine dernière. Uh, and then... Uh, asking the date, quelle est la date? And these are ways to give the date right here. C'est le 1er septembre. C'est le 1er septembre. So the first is kind of an exception. You don't use uh, uh, the numbers uh, that you've been studying in this chapter, right? You use uh, the ordinal numbers. So first, c'est le 1er septembre right there. So the first is an exception. C'est le 1er. Uh, uh, but for the others, if it's October 2nd, you just say deux. C'est le 2 octobre. C'est le 2 octobre. C'est le 30 août, for example. Okay? Uh, and then... Les mois. Le mois. Quels sont les mois de l'année? What are the months of the year? So, these are the months of the year. Les mois de l'année sont janvier, février, mars, avril, mai, juin, juillet, août, septembre, octobre, novembre et décembre. Careful with these. Not only do you not capitalize them, but there are three months of the year that have accent marks in them, right? Where are they? Look, find them real quick. Février has an accent. It's F-E, accent aigu, V-R-I-E-R, right? Août, août has an accent in it, right? It's A, O, U, accent circonflexe, T. And décembre has an accent in it, too. D-E, accent aigu, C-E-M-B-R-E. -E. There you go. So three months with accents. None of them are capitalized. And that's the vocabulary of the chapter, okay? So uh, uh, make sure you're studying the vocabulary, by the way. Are you listening to it on a regular basis? Are you writing it out sometimes? Are you quizzing yourself? Are you trying to associate a French word with a picture of the word in your head? Those are all tips I gave you on how to incorporate new vocabulary uh, uh, in the class, okay? So um, uh, this 
chapter is being used for a few weeks uh, uh, here, right? So we finished with week one, but we moved on to week two right here, right? So uh, in week two, remember, you have to log in two times a week. You're going to get a video-based e-workbook called Bienvenue à Lyon. I'll have that posted uh, uh, probably by end of day today, Saturday. And uh, you'll also have uh, two text exercises to do. Some people have already done one or more of their text exercises, right? Make sure you're using uh, a PDF generator to uh, turn in your PDFs 1.1 and 1.2 are due this week in the Chapter 1 uh, uh, module in content. You have a voice board to do. I'll be posting the voice board uh, probably today or tomorrow. You have an audio recording to make. It's actually a uh, pretty easy audio recording to make because it's one you've already done. Uh, uh, it's back from the preliminary chapter. So I gave you some input. If you log in and desire to learn and go to feedback, you'll get some feedback uh, about your recording right there. So make sure that you incorporate my feedback in your new version of audio recording one. And when you make and submit your recording, you should be using Audacity or some other tool that will let you make MP3s because I don't want any other files besides MP3s. So for text exercises, those have to be PDFs. For your audio recordings, those have to be MP3s, right? No WAV files, nothing else, all right? MP3s, please, all right? And you'll also have a discussion uh, uh, this week as well. You'll see, if you look at Semaine 3, week 3, that Chapter 1 uh, is being used uh, in that week too, and Semaine 4 also, uh, uh, Chapter 1, is being used there too. And we're moving on to Chapter 2, starting in Week 5, okay? So uh, um, Chapter 1 is going to be used for a few weeks here. Week 2, Week 3, and Week 4, okay? So there you go. So that's our upcoming stuff in Desire to Learn.